Good morning, everyone. Welcome um, on, on this, uh, at least for me here in Bangalore, bright and sunny uh, Sunday morning. Uh, I, I hope it's, uh, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all keeping safe. These are strange and troubling times, but um, um, but I think we're all getting used to the new normal and, and powering ahead. So uh, I, I hope uh, I hope everybody's keeping and, and their families are keeping well. Uh, good morning and, and welcome, Professor Jankiram and uh, Mohan. Good morning. Good morning. Um, all right. Uh, let me start to share my screen so we can get started. Wonderful. Um, what are we doing here this morning? Uh, my name is Harish Subramanian, and, and in a moment I'll introduce Professor Jankiram and Mohan, and and uh, and and uh, you know we're we're both grateful and honored to have them both here. We're here to talk about uh, two things today. We're to, here to talk about uh, what the the field of software engineering uh, is looking like uh, with the emergence of technologies like cloud, blockchain, and IoT, and what that means for you um, as somebody who's thinking about developing yourselves as grow, you know, thinking about growing into being software engineers and software architects. Um, and, and we'll take a moment to walk through what that means for you. Uh, we'll also talk about why in this environment, uh, we've decided to launch this program, uh, this advanced certification program in software engineering for cloud blockchain and IoT. Um, and and uh, as as the person most responsible for uh, for this, I'll I'll uh, you know I, I'll open it up to questions uh, addressed to Professor Jan Kiram later on in the session. We will reserve some time at the end, uh, quite a bit of time at the end for Q and A. Uh, so in case all of you have questions, please start sending through your questions. We may not take them as you send them, but uh, you know, but we'll try to get to as many of them at the end. All right. Um, As I mentioned, um, you know we have uh, a, a, a very interesting group of people here, uh, a very illustrious group of people here. Uh, professor Jankiram D uh, is a professor at, in computer science and engineering at IIT Madras and is the program director for this uh, advanced certification program. Uh, he currently heads and coordinates all research activities uh, for the Software Systems Research Lab uh, at IIT Madras. And his current research focus is on building large-scale software systems, especially distributed systems, you know, cloud and grid computing and so on, uh, and challenges in big data processing. Uh, he has authored books on grid computing and building large-scale software systems, which have been used across several academic programs. He's currently the Special Interest Group Chair of Distributed Computing at Computer Society of India, and also the founder of the Forum for Promotion of Object Technology in India. He's also the founding chair of the ACM Chennai chapter. He was awarded the Boys Cast Fellowship in 1997, and uh, for, for his teaching and research, he's been awarded the IBM Faculty Award in 2007 and a Yahoo Faculty Grant in 2009. He's also the principal investigator for a number of truly pioneering projects, which include uh, Mobitel, mobile telemedicine for rural India, uh, a peer-to-peer -peer concept search, and CDAX Bharat Operating System and Solutions, where he developed the minimalistic object-oriented Linux. Um, this, I, I'm sure, is a, is a very short uh, list uh, of, of uh, a long career of, uh, of achievements, Professor Jankiram. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for making the Thank time. You. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Mohan Lakham Raju, uh, founder and CEO at Great Learning, an institution he built over the last seven years. Um, Mohan was recently awarded the best EdTech CEO of the year by EdTech Review. He's also the vice chairman and CEO of Great Lakes Institute of Management, which is consistently ranked among the top 10 business schools in India. And he's also had an illustrious career as an investor. He was a managing, managing director for Tiger Global, spearheading their investments in India and Southeast Asia, and was also a part of the founding team of a technology company that was acquired by Hewlett Packard in the US. Uh, Mohan earned his MBA from uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business and MS in Computer Science from the University of California at Berkeley and a BTEC in computer science from IIT Bombay. Um, and my name is Harish Subramanian. I'm a director at Great Learning, uh, where I create and lead many of our programs, particularly in transformative technologies. Previously, I've, I've had a career straddling both business and technology. Um, I was a manager at the Boston Consulting Group, 
and built pricing and financial workflow algorithms for financial firms across three different continents. I earned my uh, MBA from the Kellogg School of Management and MS from the University of Texas at Austin. All right, that's us. Uh, welcome, everyone, and uh, let's get started. Thank you, Harish. Thank you. All right, so let me set the context. Right? Before we get into the program and what we are talking about as far as the program is concerned, why, why did you know, why did this group come together? Why did we come together to create such a program? You know, over the last decade, we've talked about, uh, you know, proliferation of digital. We've talked about the rise of uh, AI and machine learning and so on. But for any technology to truly become transformative, for it, it has to be ubiquitous, right? Uh, and we're starting to see some of that now. And, and it's not just the next decade. It's something that's happening right now, right? A rise in internet penetration. We're not talking about billions and billions of users. Uh, you know, everybody has a smartphone. Uh, you know, technology has now, you know, come into the hands of, uh, of everybody. It's not just the niche elite, right? Uh, and, and as I said, an increasing transition to digital. The word increasing is is pertinent here because you know we've already we've always been moving, you know, slowly and steadily towards digital. But I think there's been some kind of a, a sea change over the last few years, and and this is only going to accelerate. Right? We're talking about digital devices. We're talking about digital first. We're talking about a generation that's growing up, um, you know, used to having uh, technology enabled devices all around them. Uh, of course, improved infrastructure helps. We all uh, heard the AGM, uh, the, the Geo AGM a couple of days ago. Um, you know, we're talking about 5G. We're talking about 5G that is now truly ubiquitous. Uh, you know, high performance systems, things that, you know, 15, 20 years ago used to be in supercomputing rooms at, at you know, institutions like IIT Madras are now in our uh, in our pockets, right, our, our devices. And, and, uh, and that's another massive improvement in the infrastructure that's now available. And finally, what all this means is that no software application, no application that anybody is building right now is simple. Uh, and, and you know things are inherently complex right now. We're talking about uh, you know, nobody is sitting down and, and, and writing specifications from the ground up and saying, I am going to build you know, a particular software. And so let me start from scratch, right? Everybody uses APIs. Everybody uses um, you know, external tools and services because we're now Every software engineer and every software technology company is standing on the shoulders of giants. To to paraphrase Isaac Newton, right? Uh, we're building on top of technologies. We're you know technology on top of technology. So nothing is monolithic. Everything is interconnected. Um, you know, and and as things move on the cloud, uh, you know we we're starting to see common utilities, common pipelines being built. What does all this mean, right? All this means that the definition of a software professional is changing. We're not talking about somebody who can, you know, who can sit and ideate um, by themselves an entire technology and go and build it with perhaps a small team of people. Right? It has become an inherently social endeavor. Uh, it's it's something that people have to, uh, you know, you have to understand uh, the complex ecosystem around you as a software engineer if you are to start building these applications. So, what is this complex ecosystem? Right? So, we're talking about cutting edge technologies. Um, and, and I think this is the, the, the kind of slide that has to be updated you know, nearly every month because this number, you know, the 175 zettabytes of, of data, and, and if I have this correctly, I think that's a billion terabytes. So if you have a 1 TB hard drive or a USB drive, there's, that's about 100. Uh, a, a zettabyte is a billion of them, and we're talking about 175 billion such hard drives. Right? That's how, how much data is, is, is being generated uh, every three years, and, and I'm sure you know, we, if we do this presentation six months, a year from now, that number is going to be astronomically higher. So that's been going on, right? And that and that's exponential growth. Um, and, and and there's nothing anybody can do to uh, to stop that. But I'll go back to this point I was making about ubiquity, right? Ubiquitous, uh, the ubiquitous nature of, of any technology. Cloud computing used to be something that large enterprises did. Uh, it was something 10, 15 years ago that the IBMs and, and you know, maybe large companies had to worry about. But now we're talking about a world in which cloud data centers process nearly all of the workload, right? 94% of the workload um, for data processing. So all of this 175 zettabytes of information we're talking about is now nearly all of it is going through the cloud, right? Which makes sense because now that, that means that um, annual IT spend is almost entirely skewed towards the cloud. 
which means that anybody who's who's starting from CTO or CIO or a software architect is now thinking cloud first. Software engineers are starting to have to think about okay, uh, it's it's not it's not a use case. It's probably my primary use case. Right. So that's happening, um, and that's something that's it's it's become the utility. It's become kind of like the electricity lines and the telephone lines and the water pipes up, upon which all of technology is being built these days. So it's it's become uh, it, it's. Of course, one of the big benefits is it's leveling the playing field. Okay. The Internet of Things, they're probably one of the most misunderstood and, and misconstrued terms in, in business and technology today. And, and Professor Jankiram, you know, I, I think you are the expert here, so, so please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But um, the Internet of Things, again, is, is something that's been going on for a while. Right. Uh, you know, connected device. All it means is is that you have devices that are not just static devices. You know, maybe gathering some data and then you know, and and then we figure out how to get the information out of it later. These are inherently connected to the internet or the mobile networks, um, and to the extent that we can call it intelligence, they tend to have some degree of intelligence baked in. But we're now talking about seventy five billion connected consumer devices in the next few years, and that's roughly ten devices per living human being on earth right and and that's a massive number of consumer devices um which means that nearly two-thirds or more of the 175 zettabytes of data we're talking about will be generated through these sensors devices machine to machine data and so on right. um so what does that mean that means that a software engineer is no longer just thinking about um, you know, building that application. They're worried about where this application is going to be embedded, what kind of devices it's going to interact with, right? Is it going to be on the web? Is it going to be inherently on the cloud? Um, is it evolving as an algorithm, right? As, as machine learning and AI-enabled algorithms do. So that's an important component of, of an emerging technology that, that a software engineer has to think about. And of course, there's blockchain. Um, you know, if if you start putting all of these together, now, now blockchain itself is there's an estimate that 10% of global GDP will be stored in blockchain. Uh, you know, over the next seven or eight years, and that's massive, right? We're talking about a significant portion of the entire money flow in the world now. Uh, you know, being recorded um, and and being tracked and being monitored and and intel layers of intelligence built on top of it uh, using blockchain technologies. Of course, some of the, the most well-capitalized large businesses, healthcare, uh, financial services, manufacturing, retail, are probably going to start this trend. And, that, and they have been the first to adopt because they have the ability to do so. But it's not going to, you know, I, I mean, if you start putting all of these together, right? Let me give you two quick examples. Um, we talk about, you know, uh, financial services, blockchain, everybody associates these things with financial services. But let's take um, healthcare, right? What if we have, you know, right now what happens? The onus is, if, if you fall sick, the onus is on you to go to the doctor, uh, to set, get, get an appointment, to carry your file, uh, which probably contains the last year or two of, of medical records. Maybe it's digitized, maybe it's already at, uh, at the hospital. But what if you had a nation of connected devices, connected patients, right? You had sensors, everybody had relatively inexpensive sensors that were monitoring and, and provided early diagnosis of something wrong which could automatically sync with a calendar at, at your nearest hospital, get you the closest appointment, a virtual assistant. That's actually a trivial problem. It's already been solved. And you have all your patient records on, on a blockchain, which means it cannot be tampered with. It's secure. And you have your entire life history of records on, on the blockchain available pretty much anytime to any doctor who, who needs to see you, even if you're on vacation, even if you're on an island. Right? That's a healthcare example, and that's not very far away from actually happening, right? Let's take shipping and logistics. Right now, it's actually a very tedious process, right? The, the way shipping works is you pack everything into a container. Uh, somebody has to man write down, it could be manually, it could be on a tablet, but write down every single piece uh, of, of, uh, of thing that is in that container. So that's your inventory. Um, a shipping manifest is created. The shipping manifest then gets sent to the receiving party before, the, uh, before it's received. Um, so that on the other end, they can sit and track and, and then count up and, and check off every single piece to see if everything is there, everything is safe, and so on and so forth. Right? But asset tracking is starting to become ubiquitous, which means a, a simple RFID chip, something like that, in, in individual sensors in every single piece of equipment packed into the device. Now, you can't even really tamper with it because people are coming 
coming at, at methods of triangulating this information, right? Which means there's Wi-Fi, there's GPS, there's Bluetooth, there's RFID. So you can't really mess with any one system because you're taking you know, multiple systems to, to figure out what is happening with that particular uh, shipment. So if the shipment is getting sent elsewhere, if your shipment is getting broken into two or three different shipments, you'll know exactly what's happening to all of it. Inventory management, route management is, is happening seamlessly. But guess what? You have the blockchain as well, which means that the manifest truth Right, what was packed, you can break it down into a million pieces, you can send it anywhere, but that truth is always around. So you can always verify it on the other end. Uh, you don't need a, you know, a particular document to go through. Um, it, blockchains can only be updated, so you can't make changes, which means that you can always go back. You know, the, the entire thing can be run through a smart contract. And again, these are not things that, these are not science fiction areas, these are not hypothetical areas, these are things that, that are being worked on. Right? Now, these are the really cool things that are happening as far as the emerging technology is concerned. But what does that mean to everybody who's a software professional? This means that um, you, as somebody building an application, it have to worry about every one of these things. You have to be cognizant of all of these developments. Because tomorrow, your architect, your boss, your you know, team lead, or, or you know, your new project is going to demand that you understand all of these different moving parts. You understand why something on the cloud is inherently different from something built on premise. Why IoT information is different from, you know, from, from everything else. Right? As an architect or as an aspiring architect or an engineer, you're going to have to make the choices of which gateways, which operating systems, which devices you're going to use, and right? what platforms you're going to use. Are you going to use Azure or AWS or, um, or Google Cloud or IBM and what their inherent strengths and weaknesses are? Um, you're going to just make choices between control and user friendliness, right? And and so the uh, and this is not meant to intimidate anybody in the software engineering field. I think what's what's important to recognize is that as anybody in that field, um, it's incumbent on on you uh, to to develop frameworks, right? To develop your own toolkit and ways to think about how to approach these problems. Because these might seem like really large, complex problems, but Professor Jankiram and, and many other industry experts have been thinking about this way before it became ubiquitous. right? And, and, and they've developed frameworks. There are ways to think about how do you engineer for such, uh, such an environment? How do you engineer for such a, uh, you know, such a problem uh, statement? And, and, uh, and, and that brings me to the kind of program and the timeliness of the program that, that we've built. Right? In this changing field, um, you know, uh, Professor Jankiram has, has been uh, has had the foresight to think about what is the you know what is the what's what is the software engineer of today and tomorrow have to know about cloud blockchain and IoT and how do you develop applications for these emerging technologies so that you can build your career appropriately, right? Um, I want to emphasize this is not a program on cloud computing or blockchain or IoT. This is a program for all software engineering professionals on adapting to the world that involves all of these technologies. Right? So uh, it's, it's a very uh, broadly relevant. It's relevant to anybody who wants to think about designing and architecting these kinds of systems uh, in the context of IoT, in the context of software, engine, uh, software built on the cloud, and in the context of blockchain-enabled uh, technologies. So I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let the, the, the wisdom and knowledge pour out from the horse's mouth, uh, Professor Jankiram. Um, yeah, you know, you've been at IIT Madras uh, for a while. Uh, it's it's one of the foremost institutes. I don't think IIT Madras needs much of an introduction, to be perfectly honest. It's it's among you know the country's oldest and most established institutes in technology. It's been an innovator in in academic research as well as industry connectedness. Um, it's a pleasure to to have you on board. It's a pleasure to uh, to collaborate with you on this program. Um, but uh, but you know I, I'll hand it over to you. I would love for you to to talk about why uh, you know why this program, why the, why now, and and uh, what you at IIT Madras have uh, have envisioned for it. Uh, good morning, Harish and Mohan, uh, and to all the viewers, all, all the viewers. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to invite you for this uh, unique program designed by IIT Madras along with uh, great learning. Uh, uh, this is the advanced certification program in software engineering. And this program uh, is being launched as part of the uh, continuing education uh, of IIT Madras. And uh, you know, the, the idea of this uh, certification uh, program, I will explain to you briefly later. 
but uh, let me first on behalf of iit madras the continuing education uh, of iit madras and also the dean academic courses and our director let me extend a very warm welcome to you to this program and to this launch event along with great learning you know i call this is a unique uh, program because uh, as harish rightly said the context uh, the software engineering as we know earlier uh is completely different and going to be different in the next 20 years or next 30 years it's going to radically change software is increasingly becoming complex and it is increasingly becoming distributed uh so the idea of actually uh, building a software for a for a very complex distributed system is going to be extremely challenging and demanding and that's a skill that will be in great demand in the uh, next uh, 10 to 20 years and then the idea is that we create a program where what we believe as the core of the principles in building a very complex software system distributed system we try to build the foundations in uh, as part of this program and create a new kind of a software professional that is needed uh, in the challenging coming challenging times for the industry so that's a key idea with which we went on on designing this as an advanced certification program in software engineering along with great learning i should acknowledge at this point the support that we got from mohan and uh, his colleagues especially harish and others and they went and then did a uh, no real analysis and they themselves came forward um, supporting the idea of of such a program and that's uh, um, you know that's a great thing about great learning they seems to be very progressive IIT Madras is also extremely progressive, as you know, because uh, we we have this is second uh, certification online program that we are launching, and uh, as you know, online programs are acquiring a, a, a new dimension now, especially in the context of COVID, um, and then it is going to change the way people are going to learn. And uh, one of the key things IIT Madras is experimenting now is to see how the online education is going to define. and then dictate the coming uh, you know century because uh, the way people are going to learn is going to be completely different so we are gearing up ourselves um, uh, under the leadership of our director and uh, other admi key administrative officials to see how we can uh, we can redefine education in the uh, 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 in the, the global context with the changed environment completely so in that context this program acquires a much more greater importance and then we want we want actually go and then uh, you know experiment with this online education and one of the key partners that we have selected in the process is great learning um i will spend one more minute on this and tell you that what we have discovered with our experience with the online education is that uh, it's a, the scaling aspect of the online education and the mentoring and the support that is needed in the online education Uh, we have underestimated earlier and that resulted in uh, you know under for our understanding that the challenge is actually trying to support the learners in the online context and uh, you know that alone cannot be done uh, by us and then we need partners in in, the, in this in this endeavor and suddenly a partner uh, you know like great learning uh, is go going to greatly enhance and then uh, complement uh whatever we do along with the support and other infrastructures they have and that i see is a key uh, ingredient for the success of online education uh, at least uh, no that, that's our understanding and that's one of the reasons why we went to, into this partnership um, and trying to explore uh, the frontiers of online education along with great learning uh i think great learning also earlier has, uh, in, has experimented with other uh, um, premier institutes like stanford and uh, uh university of austin at texas so we are we are excited to partner with great learning and offer this course now uh, a bit more on the course which the harish has set the context now one of the key things as i explained we want to give the fundamentals of how you design your large scale software to start with and it cuts across various domains for example if you look at the complex systems it's like there are billion moving components and designing a complex system is a is a much bigger challenge compared to any of the other engineering disciplines you have seen 
because if you have got a million lines of code it is like having million moving components in your system you know uh, th this kind of challenge is not faced by the other engineering disciplines so uh, software engineering is unique in terms of building extremely complex systems and uh, you know lack of the theoretical underpinnings to prove the behavior of these systems is another very challenging uh, you know uh, issue for example if you have built a distributed log server like the zookeeper trying to understand its behavior and proving it is again a very complex uh, one and we still don't understand fully how to actually do those things so the key thing is what are some of the core principles in designing the software complex software which includes the design patterns you know how the software <coughs> programs are designed how distributed software is uh, is developed and how do you test the distributed software and all these components form the first part of the course which is the foundations so the foundations of building large scale complex software forms the core foundations for this course so we want to spend some time building the foundations now on top of the foundations we want to explore the emerging technologies like the cloud computing uh, iot and the blockchain uh for applic applying whatever you have learned into these systems so that your understanding becomes complete at the same time you also position yourself for these emerging technologies and you can do and position yourself uh for uh, working in the industry which is rapidly evolving and cha changing and uh, with the covid post covid situation is going to be greatly different and we believe india could position itself uh, no in a, in a very right way and then exploit all the opportunities that come in the indian uh, no uh, our way you know for, for for india and uh, that way this program could help you actually put yourself in that context for example if you look at cloud uh, ibm ceo rightly points out saying that only 10% to 15% of the cloud uh, is exploited right now which means that another 80% 85% of the potential to be exploited with the cloud computing is going to come in in the next 10 to 15 years so that's the key thing that he actually explains in uh, with an interview in the cnn that's he sees as a very important technology to focus upon especially if you look at the public and private cloud how you build your software in the public the private cloud uh, and then scale it up to the uh, public cloud seamlessly that's going to be a key issue in terms of building your systems in the cloud you know Uh, and that's uh, scaling and then seamlessly integrating what you have developed in the private cloud to the public cloud are, uh, uh, are the two issues that i believe is going to dictate how you develop your software for the cloud systems they they're going to be other issues uh, but then uh, these are the things that we will make you focus upon when you look at each one of these similarly if you look at the uh, amount of smart cities focus that whole world has including india the iot systems are going to play a very very key role um especially the amount of data that is going to be generated by all these devices connected devices and taking the data to the cloud and doing analytics there and then controlling those devices back because all our environment we would like to make it as smart as possible as you can see uh, covid makes this uh, no a lot more important in the coming uh, days for us to think in terms of how we make our environments smarter and should be able to respond to challenges unknown challenges like this covid which hit us uh, no right now right so those kind of things uh, are, are what the iot is going to bring to the table and uh, this technology is going to interplay with cloud technology and also how uh, the ai and machine learning all these algorithms which work on the cloud side are going to dictate how these iot devices are going to be made smarter so uh this whole technology interplay is also very important that is also one reason why we have chosen these three uh things very very clearly the cloud iot and the next is the blockchain if you look at blockchain blockchain is likely to change the way we work in future mainly because what blockchain is bringing uh, uh bringing to our uh, uh, table is the most important component of trust why trust is very important i always go back to uh, what my mother used to say you know my mother used to tell me that 
her mother uh, her grandmother never believed that these banks are going to store the money and then they will give back whenever you know they, they want so it's a question of trust you, you they, they never used to trust a new technology called the bank you know which takes your money and then gives it back you know so without trust not, nothing is going to work because in a decentralized way we should have uh, a trust that 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 the trust in the things that we are doing now the distributed ledger technologies without any central component we are bringing in trust uh, to the system and that's going to become an essential part of a lot of things that we do on the software systems so in that sense blockchain has the potential to become a, a key component in everything that we do uh, when the third party trust is needed and especially if you look at iot plus cloud uh, which which uh, which are going to revolutionize the way the supply chains are going to work along with the blockchain which is a trust component that comes in and you know, it it actually going to revolutionize and it is started revolutionizing the way the whole supply chain systems are going to work so this is the context in which we thought that these three pillars that we chose on top of the foundation you know the on top of the software engineering fundamentals foundation we thought that we will take these three pillars and then uh, try to design this course so that it becomes most relevant and appropriate for the current context so that is the setting you know we hope that uh, you will find this course very interesting challenging and useful and uh, we look forward to actually welcoming you on board for this course and then uh, we're suddenly excited uh, you know to launch this course in partnership with uh, great learning uh, lastly i would like to you know just acknowledge the support that we got from all the administrators at iit madras especially our dean academic courses professor jagdish kumar and also our cce chairman and other supporting staff who actually tirelessly work at the back end because these are administrators who actually have to do a lot of things including our legal department and all they all actually have put in you know uh, and then uh, made a lot of efforts in making this program happen and uh, since this is a covid time and all of us are working from home especially on a sunday i didn't want to bother them but then we are going to suddenly have a physical launch at iit madras sooner once the system once the th things improve uh then we would be welcoming you to the uh, institute and we will be very happy to uh, you know have a launch session at iit madras where uh, you know uh, uh, you, you can interact with some of our administrators as well you know with these few words i'll hand over back to harish to uh, you know for the rest of the program thank you professor jankaram um i i do have uh, you know as you spoke uh, you know there are a couple of other questions that came up but i'll save it for for a little while later um you know you talked about uh, uh, you know collaborating with us at great learning uh, speaking for myself it's been a privilege interacting with you over the last uh, few weeks and months uh, you know ideating and building this program uh, but i think the best person to talk about the collaboration from the great learning perspective uh, is mohan so uh, mohan i invite you to you know to briefly introduce great learning uh, and share your thoughts on the program why it's needed uh, right now uh, and and the partnership with iit madras yeah thank you harish and uh, thank you professor jankiram i think that was a excellent uh, rationale and motivation that you shared for the program uh, i also extend a very warm welcome to all the participants uh, thank you for your interest in this program and in uh, the launch event for the program that we are having uh, it is a great pleasure and a privilege for us to work with iit madras Uh, the top institution in our country in india in the area of technology um, as a graduate of iit i remember going to madras even though i ended up studying in bombay when i was just 17 years old and uh, admiring uh, everything that i saw there and and it's it's wonderful that after 23 years we are having a chance to engage and bring this uh, you know, very timely and uh, you know practically relevant program to um, to all the folks who are interested in learning uh, so um, i i thank dr janaki ram for all the uh, visionary support that he has uh, provided so far the leadership and guidance that he has provided so far in the design of this program it has been a real pleasure working with you sir thanks uh, and and we look forward to uh, taking that um, forward as well 
sure, yeah. folks at great learn thank you at great learning uh, our mission has always been to help students and working professionals always uh, upskill themselves and be uh, in front of the latest in demand skills through high quality transformational learning right so so all aspects of those are very important to us you know the fact that you keep upskilling and stay relevant as the world changes around us and using high quality education as the driver for making that happen you know for me and my colleagues our lives have completely changed because of the quality of the education that we received and we are very grateful for that and we made it our mission to make sure that as many people um as possible can benefit from the transformational um life changing benefits of high quality education and we've been very fortunate to be able to partner with the best institutions in india and in the world uh, to make that happen and why do we partner with these institutions because that's where the best minds the best faculty of the world are you know unfortunately the world doesn't have enough amazing faculty and the few that are there are at these amazing institutions and that's what makes them the best institutions so our uh, modus operandi or the way we are working is to partner with them and to greatly magnify and amplify the impact that these amazing uh, faculty have you know we call them uh, great learning gurus and we refer to them as gurus because in our tradition you know guru is like god you know and and we have uh, the magic that a high quality faculty can create is unparalleled and we want as many people as possible to experience that magic yeah so so that's what we've been uh, trying to do at great learning uh, we are about 7 years old and uh, uh, we have been very fortunate to have been able to deliver 25 million hours of high quality learning that has impacted more than 2 lakh people across the world you know we have learners now not just in india but from 140 countries uh, and um, and you know we have heard such amazing stories of transformation you know whether it is people from you know tier 2 tier 3 cities in india the metros of course in you know the other developing countries people from places in africa in um, in various parts of the middle east and so forth and so it's been a very very uh, rewarding journey for us um you know we have also been fortunate to work with institutions in addition to iit madras stanford university both the business school as well as the engineering school there ut austin uh, purdue university um you know we are launching a new program now with northwestern university as well uh, and indian institutions uh, including iit madras great lakes and we also work with iit bombay as well so um you know in all of these places it's the it's the faculty that make the magic happen and uh, we are very fortunate to be working with them uh, the other kind of cornerstone of our focus has been on the changing workplace the changing nature of business the changing nature of industry right you know uh, no longer is the world um, unidimensional no longer is it uh, you know divided into disciplines the way traditionally the disciplines have been divided right you know it's not like your practical problems are business problems or technology problems or you know financial problems everything is now interdisciplinary right and uh, and that's where our programs have been focused on right how do you solve practical problems through the application of interdisciplinary solutions and interdisciplinary knowledge right and that's what we have been doing uh, all of these years and you know here is another program the one that we are doing now is to basically take software engineering the principles of software engineering as they are uh, will be practiced in the coming years and then you know applying them into a new context where problems are being solved through emerging technologies um, like iot like cloud and uh, like blockchain today none of these technologies are novel right their value has already been proven but we are still in the early stages of those and and our attempt is to work with these amazing faculty to make those accessible you know to as many people as as possible uh the last aspect of uh the way we do things at great learning that i want to share with you is that um we believe that for high quality robust learning to happen uh, learners need support 
okay um, which is why uh, you know how mooks did not really deliver on the promise that they had right you know while a lot of content is available content by itself is not the same as learning which is why the pedagogy that we employ uh, is one called we call mentored learning where you know you you learn some things and then you apply them and then there is a mentor that is available that you meet with every week uh, on the weekend where you get all your doubts cleared you get all your questions answered and then you start practicing what you have what you have learned right so by having this loop of learning and application learning and application we are able to you know deliver very good learning outcomes to a large number of learners and that has really worked for us and that's what makes great learnings uh, approach towards education unique and differentiated you know so the we call that mentored learning and we invite you all to uh, experience that so we are very excited about this program we have discussed with many of our corporate partners um, you know the program and its uh, its uh, curriculum and what its goals are and uh, they have really endorsed it and and are excited about it there will be several folks from the industry who will you know participate uh, in the program as well so we are very excited about it we hope that this program can um herald a uh, uh, path towards a new generation of software engineers you know who are able to use all of these new technologies to create amazing solutions uh, for the world uh, and we are also once again very excited to be working with iit madras which has again and again demonstrated how pioneering it is uh, the the bsc program the undergraduate program that they just launched is the first online bsc program in the entire world and you know uh, so that again goes on to show the pioneering nature of the institution so we are very fortunate and uh, honored to be able to partner with iit bombay and my gratitude to professor janaki ram and all the the leadership at iit madras for giving us a chance to partner with them to do this program so we in, i invite you all to uh, experience the program yourself and we look forward to uh, welcoming the inaugural cohort um you know in a few weeks so thank you once again and uh, uh, congratulations to everyone involved excellent thank, thank you mohan um now uh, you know i, I said we have uh, a number of questions uh, for professor janki ram but before that you know we, we talked about the program so let's let's actually uh, you know uh, discuss a little bit of uh, in detail about what what the specifics of the program are right um this is a 9 month long online program uh, and as mohan mentioned with personalized mentorship uh, mentorship is a key element uh, you know it doesn't matter if it's a 3 month 6 month 9 month a year long program or degree program we always have mentors we always have gurus as as uh, as mohan rightly pointed out uh, and that's a that's a cornerstone of every, every, everything we've done and will continue to do uh this involves 300 hours or more of learning um now uh, you know that Uh, typically that 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 number could you know you might require a little bit more time a little bit less time depending on your background uh, but i think uh, that's a that's a good solid estimate of of the kind of commitment and time and these are not trivial areas right so i think it's a fa it's fair to say these this is a this is a life changing transfer, transformative kind of program so you know you, you you get out of it what you put into it so so we expect that you know people are going to uh, commit to it and and spend a, a significant portion of their week uh, learning through these programs um as i said over 40 hours of mentorship and and you know the, by no means is that a hard number right uh, for us the way we look at mentorship and guidance and coaching is uh, is we do what it takes to deliver effective learning outcomes um but but again that's a that's a guideline uh, for us to uh, you know to look at how much work goes into the program um and this is a very hands on program this is a very much about doing software engineering cannot cannot be theory right cannot be something that you know somebody just gives you a uh, high level uh, knowledge or gyan not right it has to be practiced uh, so everything we do um, there is an element of of doing projects and assignments uh, hitting your head against a brick wall that's how a lot of good learning happens um, but of course that's where mentors are are available that's where faculty are available that's where our program program office supports you uh, in making sure that you know that you're not just going out there unsupported um but yes it is a very hands on program and at the end you will um you will uh, you know participate in a capstone project now a capstone project um is not just another project right? uh, typically when people go out and and do uh, job interviews or or go talk to their own uh, employers or their own teams and managers about what they have learned 
it is usually in the context of this capstone project because a capstone project is a synthesis of everything you've learned um and and you know and and builds on everything that you've learned over the last 9 months and at the end you will have a project a meaningful uh realistic project um that uh, that is used to showcase what you've learned right because most people in the industry these days don't care about what you claim to know um you know topics on a resume or a cv are are, are just that they're just words what they care about is what you can do and more importantly what you can do for them right so uh, so that's what a capstone project is there to to help you demonstrate um as, as you know i think we talked about the the program and and how this is uh, dr jankiram uh, talked about how it's built um you know, the foundations right we are obviously going to start with the foundations uh, no good software en software engineering for x is still a software engineering program <laughs> so you still have to learn the the foundations you still have to know good software design good database design good architectural practices um without this uh, you know nothing else works um but once you've established once we've established these foundations um we look at how it applies to uh, iot use cases right now iot as i said is a complex system it actually requires different skills you you need to be working with large scale data sometimes real world i mean sometimes real time sometimes batch uh, it's typically done on the cloud there is an element of analytics involved um you're you know for a change you're interacting with physical devices so so we'll take a look at how a lot of these software engineering practices that you've learned um you know at at your undergraduate degree maybe at work maybe and and over the course of the module 1 and apply that to this particular use case uh you will then look at how building anything on the cloud is structurally different and what are the intricacies of that um you know how do you deploy uh applications using containers how do you deploy it intrinsically for the cloud how do you architect systems for the cloud and last but not least you are going to learn about blockchain and and blockchain development and what what software engineering principles translate as is to the, the concept of blockchain and and what do you have to know what are the constraints you need to operate within everybody knows that blockchain is a uh, is a decentralized ledger technology um, but what does that mean for you as as somebody building an application right very few of us or uh, and very few of you um on your day to day uh, you know on your day to day software journey are going to be developing new cryptographic elements and and things like that right so that's not the core so again the, it, it's about how do you build systems on top of all of the advancements that are going on in research and how do you make that practical and useful you're you're obviously going to cover a lot of tools uh, every, you know everything from uh, you know tools like spark and cassandra that that enable you to work with you know large scale streams of data and so on you're going to work with nosql databases docker you know cloud environments like aws and google cloud but it's not about the tools at right? what we always aspire to do and and this is uh, and if you interact with me over the course of the program you'll hear you'll hear me say this over and over again um if if uh, you know if if all you know is a tool uh, your shelf life is very very limited right these tools are getting updated daily weekly uh, in fact uh, chances are by the time you join the batch some of these tools might even be replaced by other tools right the tools are 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 a means to an end they help you achieve certain things they help you as a software engineer build applications and deploy them new tools come in every day because it makes your lives easier as i said these are complex systems you're building uh, so any help will do so it's while we we'll use the tools while you will build a nice armory of uh, and a toolkit of tools that you will learn over the course of this program the emphasis will always be on the ground principles the emphasis will always be in building your ability to be a good engineer for these technologies regardless of which tool you use Right, so we might use a particular language in this program, and you might, you know, use a different language in, at your company. Uh, what we hope and what we will continue to aspire as as part of this program is that you are able to make those translations. Right, you can't, you, we can't be covering everything in every single language and every single tool. That's not the point. Um, there are quite literally thousands of these. But once you learn how to do this well in any language, any tool, um, you will be able to translate, and that's always been our hope. And you know. looking 9 months 10 months 11 months down the road uh, this is the certificate that you will be earning i think it's uh, as as mohan said we, we we've all looked up to iit madras as a, um, as as a fantastic institution and i think this is definitely going to be valuable whether it is in your professional lives within your own companies or whether you're looking for uh, you know looking at building a different career um you know a validation uh, that you've gone through a rigorous program and and you know iit madras doesn't do 
things that are not rigorous. Great learning doesn't do things that are not rigorous. So I think uh, the validation will always help. Um, you, you know, like I said, this is all outcome driven. So uh, everything we do at Great Learning, we have a fantastic career support team. Um, we have an entire platform called GL Accelerate. That's a combination of a, a, an online platform, uh, recruitment drives, uh, curated jobs that we post, career mentorship, coaching, and so on and so forth. It's a it's a very integrative approach. Um, we also work with over 400 uh, organizations um, that that have hired our alumni and, and many more that are joining the fold, right? And and this is uh, this number is only going to grow as we start talking about a program such as this, which is very very widely applicable, right? Uh, a software engineering program in in uh, you know everybody wants a good software, right? Uh, we want good software, <laughs> so uh, it's it's going to be uh, it, it's it's you know, the, the, the number of companies we engage with is, is growing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's evidenced by over 7,000 people who are, who've transitioned their careers uh, through the programs they've taken, uh, taken through us. And, and as Professor Jankiram said, there's a, <coughs> and, and as Mohan said, you know, support, not just in the learning, but also in getting you to your learning and to your career outcomes is very much a part of what you're signing up for. A quick note on on how do you apply? As I said, this is the practicalities and the nitty gritty. But um, you know, uh, this program as of today is live. Uh, so please, you know, go to go to Great Learning's website, fill out your application form. Um, you will go through a, a brief online admission test uh, because we we want to make sure, and this is as much for you as it is for us, that um, you know that that you meet the prerequisites, that you have the requisite background, uh, so that you you can make the most of this learning journey. Uh, once you've gone through that, there's a short interview process. Uh, so all shortlisted candidates will go through a short screening interview. Um, again, the goal here is not only to be evaluative, but also for you to be able to get as much information as you can so that you can make an informed decision. Um, once the entire process is done, you join the program, and you're in for a world of fantastic learning. <coughs> <coughs> All right, I'm going to pause here. That's uh, that was a very brief overview of the program. As I said, any specifics, details, um, please go to datelearningin slash IIT Madras. You'll 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 get a lot more information on on the practicalities of the program. Um, we have learning consultants who are always available to answer your questions about uh, whether the program is right for you, um, what goes on in the program, and, and I'm sure. You know, as you as you research uh, more about the program, you'll you'll get a lot more. Uh, you'll have a lot more questions, and you know, you're free to call us, uh, write to us. Uh, the lines are always open, um, so feel free to reach out. But now, um, let me spend the remaining few minutes. I, I know a lot of you have been listening um, to me, Mohan, and Professor Jankiram about the, you know about the, the the changing landscape of software engineering and 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 this program. Let me spend a few minutes. Uh, uh, you know, taking some of these questions, Professor Jankiram, if, you, if you'll stick around, it'll be wonderful if you can help answer some of right. these questions. I know Mohan, you said you have a couple of questions uh, for the professor. Uh, so why don't we start with that while we collate some of the questions that are coming in? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, some questions that uh, have already come up in, you know, uh, we find this, uh, Professor Jankiram, that happens that uh, there are always these enthusiastic um, you know, high school kids, 12th, 12th grade, uh, 11th grade students who are very enthusiastic. Uh -huh. And, you know, these days, kids are learning programming and other things very early, right? Uh -huh. Many kids are doing that. So, so we always find uh, for people saying that, you know, I, I haven't done my undergraduate, can I enroll for this program? Uh, in uh -huh. fact, just the other day, there was uh, one, one child, he's, uh, I think, 11 years old. And, you know, he was very keen to join um, one of her programs in artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And that creates, you know, a very interesting dilemma for us. So what is your take on this? Sir? So somebody who's not done their undergraduate, but is still very interested in learning, if they're able to clear the, uh, the admission, you know, is this, are they eligible to do this? Or, uh, you know, you have to have completed your undergraduate? Yeah, this is a bit tough question, but then this is what the online education is going to open up. You know, we should be alert to the kind of uh, new world and the possibilities that we will be seeing with the changing world. You know, if somebody is able to pick up and do well, and then that's where basically the online education is all for. You know, a motivated person uh, will, will be able to do a lot more with the online education because he wants to learn, he has the curiosity to learn, you know. 
uh, I think uh, if, uh, with all uh, no, with, with all the difficulties that we see, you know, should we be pushing, uh, you know, a, a 11 standard or a 12 standard person uh, into this kind of a program? I'm open, you know, I'm open, and if the person is very enthusiastic and want to do the course, I think we should look at the possibility of enrolling him. But at the same time, I think the cognitive load on him in terms of the conceptual load, I think we should we should alert him and we should make sure that you know he's prepared and then he knows and then he has a real uh, you know, uh, mental ability to cope up with the program. And I think that balance, I think uh, you know, the mentors have to look at it carefully, interview him over a long period of time and then take a careful call. But I think ruling out uh, no, is, is not a good idea, in my opinion, and you know, outright ruling out because somebody doesn't have a degree or something like that, in my opinion, may, may not be a correct thing to do in these cases. We should be alert to the changing circumstances of the online education. And certainly, if somebody is very motivated and is very you know, enthusiastic to learn some things, I think we should encourage. Uh, of course, you know, our BAC online program uh, is meant for anyone and then, you know, that's supposed to actually uh, open up and then, you know, the, the, the idea, idea is there is that anybody can enroll and then do the program, you know. So, which is a universal educational concept, you know. Uh, but then the key question with online education is what kind of support that comes in along with that, you know. So, uh, we have uh, a model, several models are being experimented, and then I personally believe that uh, more mentoring and more careful uh, you know, uh, look over the shoulder of the learner is very important for an online learner. Otherwise, he can just fall through the cracks whenever, because especially in programming assignments, if you mm -hmm. give a challenging programming assignment to these, where, where the student finds it difficult, and you know where the mentor has to intervene to let him overcome the challenge or the difficulty that is extremely important in my opinion for the online education so i think we have to strike a careful balance and then we should be open to all these possibilities in my opinion you know? yeah no thank you uh, for that uh, stance uh, dr jankiram i think uh, you know that gels well with the philosophy that we share as well which is that you know if a person has the eligibility, you know, and we um, they are able to convince us that they have what it takes to actually go through the program, you know, then really the only criteria has to be the willingness to put in the effort. So basic eligibility and the willingness to put in the effort, everybody should have access to high quality education. Having said that, you know, I want to just reiterate your point as well, which is that, you know, this is an advanced course. So just because you're able to do some programming doesn't mean that you're ready to actually do these things. You know, because not all concepts are going to be, you know, taught from scratch, right? So there is a certain uh, assumption about, you know, you know how software systems work. You have some experience with that. Those are the, you know, the the assumptions that are going to be made that you have some experience with software systems and you are ready to be able to absorb and benefit from this advanced program. I think uh, I think that's how we would look at it. And while I don't think we should say blanket anybody who's not a graduate can apply, I think case by case basis we can look at it and, like you said, assess that and take a decision. So I see that the number of questions are, uh, Harish, uh, there's a lot of questions already. So, you know, rather than me asking, I think you should take some of the audience questions. Yeah, yeah, let me do that. And, uh, and, and we may not get to all of these questions just in the interest of time, in which case, for those of you who are asking questions that are not getting covered here, we'll make sure we follow up with, uh, with some answers. Um, so a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, Professor Jankiram is is a, is from experienced folks, right? So now we're talking mm. about the other end of the spectrum, people with 15, 20 years of experience mm. Mm. Um, in IT and technology, uh, who mm. you know who have questions about you know whether this is for them and how this is going to help them um, in their careers. Uh, do you have a view on that? Yeah, I think uh, no. Uh, on a different context, this is coming up for me because you uh, know they're saying that. And for the mid mid range level uh, you now managers and the top level managers, they want a course, you know. And suddenly, this course, which is hands on, is meant for people, you know, who who can put in the time and effort to actually experience and then do the programming assignments, you know. Uh, that suddenly will not be the case. But then there are uh, always the mid and then the you know high, higher level management 
people who would like to understand uh, the technology per se, the concepts underneath the technology so that they're comfortable handling it and making decisions and exploiting the technology options that are available for them, you know. And we will be looking at it. And I think soon you may actually, you know, hear from us uh, something on that direction. You know, we're working on it, but uh, at the moment, I think, uh, you know, this course may not be really, you know, unless they are their hands on, you know, I think this course may not be the right course, you know. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, yeah, yeah hands-on is, is is definitely uh, required. As, as uh, I had said earlier, this is project-based. People are going to have to, you know, implement uh, projects. So, it's not going to be just, um, you know, a high-level coverage. Uh, there's nothing wrong with getting that coverage, but this is meant to go a little deeper as a software engineer. So, there's one quick question that I'll answer, and then I have another question for you, Professor Jankaram. So, one is uh, somebody had a question on what is um, the advantage of this course for somebody who's who already has some experience in cloud. Uh, as I think I, I mentioned this earlier, you might have some experience in cloud. You might have been exposed to IoT or analytics technologies. This is still a very, very pertinent program, um, as I said, because the, you know some of those technologies, this is not a course on cloud. This is not a program on, on IoT. The, the idea here is how do you build systems? How do you engineer effective, efficient systems um, uh, using, uh, you know, using all of the software engineering principles for these technologies or in, in light of these technologies. So you might know the cloud and, and I can almost certainly guarantee that you know there's there's a lot of value from this program. Um, as long as, uh, as I said, and, and as Professor Jan Kiram said, you're willing to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty a little bit um, as an engineer. Uh, Professor uh, Jan Kiram. Uh, yeah, 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 can I just add uh, no, the please most do, please. important the most important thing about this program as I perceive is the software engineering, the way you learn in colleges is sometimes not the correct way. And then this, this I keep saying this because there's more process orientation. But whereas what is the most important component when you do software engineering is right now the software design part. For example, there's a large complex system, you know, there are you know, the data center which is having, you know, you know, hundreds of hard disks and then, you know, there's so many layers of software that will be running on top of it, you know. So when you design even a small piece of software to work along with these other moving pieces, it is actually essentially the, the design of this complex system and what are the kind of things that can happen in this complex system. That's what is the most challenging part. And that is a foundational part of software engineering. And uh, you know, if you take cloud, you know, it's only one context because if you take a cloud system and you're de designing, for example, an application using the EMR, Elastic MapReduce uh, part of it, and then you just design a small, uh, you know, a few lines of the code using the notebook kind of a thing without understanding how the whole other layers interplay in running your uh, program on the, on the cloud, uh, if there is a bug there, you will not be able to fix it. You will not be able to understand it. You are like just a simple technician who can just, you know, do the thing and then, you know, fix some things in the car, but then don't understand anything underneath. So you, 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 you becoming from a simple technique technician to a, a you know, deep engineer, engineering skill requires understanding the, all these moving parts and trying to understand the complexity involved uh, no, in designing these systems, that's a foundational part. In our, in our opinion, only people who understand this at that level is going to survive as software engineers in the next 10, 15 years or 20 years. So that is a skill that we want them to develop using this. In fact, when uh, my own experience is when undergrad students, uh, in fact, I was having yesterday a conversation with another professor from IIT Kanpur, and we were actually discussing this and uh, I, I made a mention of this. When the student did these design patterns and all that, went for an internship with Facebook, he said that in the three years, the most important course that useful for him was the software engineering course. When the design focus comes in, when software design focus comes in and then not the process part of it, of course, that's changing and we teach you the, here with DevOps and all that stuff, containers, DevOps and how the whole uh, way of developing the software, deploying it is changing. It also comes in here, but completely in the, from an engineering point of view, you know. That's the reason why you should be looking at this course and doing this course. The foundations will change, and that is what makes you survive for a longer time as a software engineer, 
as even the outer technologies out you know outer peripheral things emerging technologies keep changing you know that's in my opinion is the key aspect and unique design of this program you know yeah well well said sir yeah um so a question on a, on a different i guess technology uh, area that we had talked about uh, so somebody asked the question that blockchain has been in the news for at least 2 to 3 years uh, and there were a lot of there was a lot of talk about banks adopting blockchain um you know what's happened and and why is it still not catching up um, is it all hype with little substance um your views on that professor jankiram see look at uh, the bitcoin you know see uh, um, when when actually when you work with the international monetary system you know one of the key problems is a lot of us don't understand you know even our own financial system let alone understanding the international financial markets and you always worried about when things collapse and for what reason they collapse or you know same thing with stock market right Mm-hmm. but increasingly all of us are have to deal with financial thing and that that's a core of our you know survival right from uh, ancient time to current time you know financial systems are the basis by which everybody you know uh, so the key component in this financial systems is is trust decentralized trust right so so uh, that is what the distributed ledger technologies are bringing in to the to the thing and if you look at bitcoin after um, now 10 years of bitcoin you know survival with the distributed ledger technologies establishes you know the governments have their own reason not to accept it because why a government would like you to see whatever it is spending on it will not because you pay your taxes and then will the government open up all its thing for you to every day look at you know they look at all your finances but will the government open its finances and tell us where all each penny gone if somebody wants to look at it that will come so it takes it's not about technology it is about society the technology is a great technology but then i think uh, the societal change will come slowly and then surely and then you know i think uh, that way blockchain technology is a is a very uh, deep technology if you look at how the whole technology is evolving the moving pieces if not for anything we should study blockchain for its technology part you know the pieces that come in into the uh the, the into in, into the whole uh, construction of the distributed ledger right it's not a new technology if you look at distributed databases distributed lock system they, all these things are, are are there already one of the key problems right now is when you put this trust component into it the transactional throughputs actually come down quite a bit this is another thing that becomes very important when you design your systems for example performance engineering right so at the end of it if the performance is not there for your system and i think it, it, it that that hits you and then that's one of the reasons why blockchains are still struggling to improve on the performance side you know for the traditional transaction systems and i think the technology is catching up i i believe that it's one of the key technologies uh, as powerful as the internet technology in my opinion if you ask me so, yeah. Uh, yeah so i just will just add there that while it is true that large scale consumer applications haven't happened in supply chain blockchain is already being used yes, okay so to to in a problem yeah. it's called provenance problem where you know people are trying to track you know where things are coming from and are they what they claim to be they are you know so when people are talking about organic items or when they are talking about various components of sophisticated supply chains it's already being used there yeah and and one more point um, I, i think that's pertinent here is you know for a lot of consumer technologies you know there there's a uh, there's a sudden exponential growth in in adoption as soon as the underlying pipelines are built right so the underlying infrastructure is built and that's a lot of that is happening right now um you know obviously uh, on the backs of a lot of the you know the enterprise use cases but people are building um you know more robust ways of um, of of implementing the blockchain the, you know the, there's a lot of uh, you know the underlying technology and and uh, the platforms are being built so uh, so yeah it, is is it going to be 6 months from now is it going to be a year from now i don't think anybody has the answer but when it happens it's too late to then ride that wave uh, because i think uh, the proliferation of applications based on that will be uh, very rapid um so uh, in interest of time i'll take one last question and and we have it here and and then we can wrap up and as i promised there are plenty of questions out there and and we'll get to all of them um we might not get to them in the session but we'll get back to you uh, and this has to do with um 
you know, with IoT and particularly the, you know, things like RFIDs and sensors like that. So there's a question around, you know, RFID has been talked about for 15, 16 years. Um, you know, why is it not caught on? Um, and, and, you know, are, are there practical applications of IoT or is this more, you know, uh, is this more of a buzzword and are there governmental, uh, is, is it only something that's discussed at the policy level? So um, again, why should a, a practical, why should a software engineer care about IoT is, is the nutshell, right? Uh, Dr. Jankiram, your views on that, please. Yeah, see, I think the course is designed the, the way the cloud, cloud suddenly people now, you know, I was telling a few years back for the policymakers also, you know, cloud is going to be the most important technology that we should focus on, you know, right? And then uh, I think we, we, in some sense, we missed the bus, bus. You know, if you look at the US, I think more billionaires got created with the cloud technology, especially at the SaaS level. You know, software as a service. I think there are quite a few who came up, including the you know, Salesforce. You know, uh, if you look at cloud plus IoT plus blockchain, IoT and blockchain, all these three are complementary technologies in the context of, for example, if you look at supply chain. You know. There are a lot of IoT devices which are going to send the data you know, to the cloud. You know, and then that's where basically all the analytics can happen. And then along with blockchain, what you actually build is the trust component. You can see now what, what exactly is coming, where the data is coming, and then you know, how to validate that data. And then that's why all these three put together is, is, is the most important new applications that, you know, that are emerging. And that's what we see will change the for example, as I said, smart city environment is a very good example. India went about 100 smart cities and then the whole world is trying to look at smart cities, you know. So that's a, uh, the, the key technology there is as cloud plus IoT plus the blockchain. And that's where basically you will see a lot of openings as the cities uh, are becoming more and more smarter and trying to implement the smart city programs. This is one part. Every supply chain uh, know, where, you know, you need some, some level of third party trust, okay and which you want a uh, third party uh, component to be to be trusting where in a decentralized framework i think next 15 20 years you will see these three technologies playing a key role in building your future systems that's where basically the idea is look at the software uh, principles as a very fundamental foundational part and look at three emerging technologies which are synergic and that's where basically your your uh, capstone project is likely to be you know that's how this whole program is designed, you know. Um, it is it is not something, uh, you know, sometimes we joke, you know, what we teach by the, by the time you graduate after four years, I think half of it has become obsolete, you know. So we give you a certificate in one hand and we say what we taught, you know, um, half of it is no longer valid because things have changed. In fact, Harish probably will say even 70% <laughs> you know, is, is, is invalid, you know. But with these with this three things that we are doing now, I think you will certainly stay in you know, uh, stay in good stead, at least for the next 10 to 15 years. I, I don't see you will, you will have problems if you have learned this course properly, in my opinion, you know, okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and I think, uh, you know, a, a very timely example of this, again, a lot of these things, as always, will get adopted by the enterprise first, right? They have the means, they have the use cases, um, they can afford expensive technology. They can afford to research and experiment before it becomes consumerized. Um, but I think even uh, you know, with with uh, COVID nineteen and and all of the issues around, you know, epidemiology is is a, is a classic use case. Right? People are talking about um, you know uh, the need for constant contact tracing, the need to understand uh, you know community spread. Uh, all of us carry, as I said, all of us carry high powered computing devices with, that are constantly connected all the time. Um, and and you know there are hundreds of companies right now that are that are scrambling to build applications that are, that will allow us to get a much better handle on this, uh, not because it's only for COVID nineteen, but it's because um, you know we we can better understand the spread of infectious diseases, uh, you know, or, or in the future in in any kind of scenario and and potentially even non communicable diseases. So the applications are there. Um, as I said, I think with with a lot of these, the pipelines are being built uh, very rapidly. And uh, you know, business applications are there. Uh, tons of business applications uh, that we see already, and uh, consumer applications. You know, hopefully, some of you who who attend this program will be the ones who are at the forefront of building some of the consumer applications for this. I right, believe so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe please. so. You know, <laughs> yeah. Especially the people coming out of this program should be the ones who should be you know 
doing lot of this uh, you know building of the you know, those kind of system that will be the need you know i think uh, yeah. the world needs them yeah. absolutely absolutely all right um i'm going to wrap up now uh we're a few minutes over uh, as i said um, two things i want to i want to end on um if you didn't get your question answered here um our team will reach out to you we'll get them answered um and and if you want to learn more about the program um you know we have all of our contact details up here both the phone number and the email id if, and of course go go look at the program page itself and you'll learn a lot before uh, even before you you make that call um i want to take this uh, this opportunity now to thank you professor jankiram um first thank of all you. for for the collaboration itself but also for taking the time to answer the questions today and and introduce yourself uh, thank you mohan uh, as well for uh, you know for participating in this discussion um this is an ongoing industrial discussion right i think uh, we're going to have many more such discussions it is i'm i'm a, i'm personally very excited about the program i hope all of you who attended this program have learned uh, something from this session and and are equally excited about the program um good luck to everybody and uh, a happy sunday yeah thanks thank everyone you. thank you professor jankiram thank you very much i think you know we look forward to an exciting program along with great learning thank you so much thank you wonderful bye